Yeah, okay. Uh, hello, my name is Joachim Windenes, and I work as a software developer in Equinor. So today I'm going to show you some examples of real-time graphic solutions that we have developed in-house in Unreal Engine. So I'm mainly going to show you two different solutions, and both of these have in common that they enable good communication and uh, yeah, a distributed understanding of our assets and operations within our company. So the solutions help us to plan operations safely and also bring down costs by yeah, empowering workers by have, giving them the information that they need to actually yeah, work efficiently. Um, some of our other simulators also enable us to yeah, they aid us in more innovative exploration, where we are able to explore new possibilities and fail fast virtually and thus also safely. So first of all, I'm going to show you uh, some of how we are exploring immersive virtual reality as part of our digital twin solution. And towards the end, I'll show a custom drone simulator that we have started to develop uh, quite recently and what we are using it for. So. Our VR solution is a part of Echo, and Echo is Equinor's digital twin, and this is accessible through numerous user interfaces, uh, depending on yeah, user needs and preferences. So we have built Echo in-house, in close contact with our users to customize it for our particular cases. So what does a digital twin mean in our case? Well, first and foremost, it is a three-dimensional visual copy of our assets. So this can be oil platforms, wind turbine parks, and gas processing facilities. So by using Echo, users can get detailed meta information about each part, such as a valve or a tube, on our asset, but also find out how it is related to their ongoing tasks. So here workers can search and filter for relevant information, and the digital twin gathers information from all of Equinor's relevant systems uh, yeah, into one view, essentially. So this enables higher safety and cost saving by em enabling a common understanding amongst employees. So I'm mainly going to focus on VR today, but I'll also briefly introduce how we use AR just yeah, to distinguish it from the VR solution. And I'll also show the PC simulator, which is, yeah, in truth, a bit outside of the digital twin solution. So, uh, in Equinor, we have used HoloLens uh, ever since it uh, yeah, was released, and it has saved us a lot of money. And the primary use for this is better project verifications, where we can align our 3D models to the physical assets to check for deviations. But more generally, the solution allows us to see what can be not be seen in reality also in one view, and this has a lot of benefits. So with the HoloLens, you can virtually see what is between uh, or behind a wall in terms of electricity or plumbing and get detailed information about every part of the platform. So this works by combining physical and virtual data in the same view, which allows us to spot errors and generally have a better understanding of the facilities. So while the HoloLens is uh, a great immersive medium, um, Virtual reality, uh, yeah, or the HoloLens, you actually have to be on the physical site. With VR, you can access this irrespective of uh, the physical location in which you are at. So, yeah, because of this, you can actually um, save time um, and reduce travel. Uh, you don't actually have to be there. And multiple people can visit and access uh, an asset in a planning process to communicate. So we are exploring virtual reality as a tool for better planning, communication, and as well for training purposes. So one of the use cases that we're exploring for our VR solution is pre-training and familiarization of onshore for offshore workers. So in this example, you can see a VR gameplay recording of a wind turbine of a similar size to the high wind tumpen field that is currently powering five snow platforms. Yeah, it's a bit slow to update, but um, these wind turbines are located out on the sea, which makes familiarization visits, and generally, uh, yeah, going there is complicated and expensive. So we are exploring the possibilities of doing this in VR in order to minimize the necessary time offshore, but also increase the amount of training that workers can receive before they start with their task. 
And visualization and interaction in VR is also especially useful for gaining a sense of scale. So from the top of the turbine down to the sea here, it is approximately 150 meters, and the blades here are over 200 meters in diameter. So a video does not really do the experience any justice either, but you can try this at our stand later if you like. Uh, we do also have multi-user functionality in our application, and this is very useful when discussing modifications on our assets, where we can overlay the project model that we are going to implement on top of the twin model. It is also useful for planning operations. So here users can inspect the site before they visit and go through the operation in order to minimize the potential for any misunderstandings. So generally having the virtual environment itself as a shared ground for communication, yeah, this can ensure that everyone on the team has the same understanding of what is to be done. We also here have the same benefits as through other interfaces in our digital twin. We can choose to remove the floor to see the pipes or only see the electricity systems and preview any changes that should be made on the asset. Safety is also very important and here workers can do measurements, identify risks and test evacuation routes. Also as part of familiarizing themselves and getting a sense of the operation from beforehand. So just in summary, as part of our digital twin, we are using VR for its ability to provide a better understanding of the facilities through training and communication on the virtual site, irrespective of physical location. But AR is very useful for hands-free, spatially relevant information when working, where the environment can be enriched through digital information. So overall, for the digital twin, it's very useful for gathering data for myriad programs into one view. Now, outside of this, we are also developing other more customized real-time graphic solutions. So what you're seeing here is an underwater drone simulator that we started to build late last year. And to the extent that it is possible, we naturally want to use technologies to perform dangerous operations subsea. So this drone requires optical reference points in order to operate. And subsea, it is very, very dark. So what we're using this simulator for currently is to find the optimal placement of lamps underwater in this planned asset, as well as sensors on the drone which are configurable. So you can probably see the red and green rays going there towards the drone. And if you see in the top corner, you see that it is tracking. So this means that we currently have the optical reference points. So in addition to helping uh, in figuring out where to pla place these sensors on the drones and the lamps, a simple question that our users may have is simply whether the drone actually fits, if it is possible to use this to perform the operation. So here you can see that I'm trying to change some valves and I'm not very, uh, or turn them, I'm not very good at this. So you get the crash. Uh, so if you can sort of run through this a lot of times, have optimal tracking all the time, uh, and without any collision, then this would be very helpful. <coughs> yeah, so this is what I wanted to show in terms of our solutions. But like I mentioned, we have created these using Unreal Engine. And before I end this presentation, I just want to very briefly discuss uh, yeah, some of the amazing possibilities that we can have here. And I think I, the best pitch I have for Unreal Engine sort of being state of the art uh, as a game engine and much more for that matter, uh, it's at CD Projekt Red, which developed uh, Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077, have announced that they are going to be using Unreal Engine instead of their own game engine for upcoming games. And this says a lot, especially when it's possible to just simply explore this for free. So opening Unreal Engine, it looks something like this. Uh, and in-game engines such as Unreal or Unity you usually have a scene view in the middle where you have your 3D assets and you can then couple these to code functionality. So in Unreal Engine, this is primarily done either using C++ or Blueprints. In our case, we use both, depending on what is to be achieved. But I thought I'd just show you Blueprints because it's uh, very different from C++. It's a visual programming language. And from my background in Unity, where we use C Sharp, um, yeah, this is quite different. Uh, I personally never used something like this before, but it is, uh, yeah quite capable and um, yeah, you do get going with it. Um, so here's just a small snippet of some code functionality for the teleport arrow in the video that you saw um, for highlighting it by changing its material and actually moving, uh, moving the user. So this is in Unreal 4.27, but in the drone simulator, we are using Unreal Engine 5. And 
that is very exciting. There is so many new features in there. I don't have time to talk about them all, and I really, really don't know them all either. But those that are curious should definitely check this out. For instance, uh, Lumen is, an, is a new lighting system uh, for fully dynamic global illuminations and reflections. And another exciting new technology is Nanite, which is a virtualized geometry system for very high object counts. So that works by only rendering out what would be visible for the user uh, in terms of the details, which makes it possible to spend less time on optimizing poly counts for performance. So that's just a small bit of what is new, but it's very fun to work with. Yeah, thank you.